Good evening, everybody, and welcome to You Create Art at Home. My name is Bess, and I'm back with your five o'clock paint and picnic. Yay! And today we're going to be doing a whale tail. So we are supporting our beautiful Tasman friends over in New Zealand this evening and this afternoon um, as they actually come out of the other end of COVID-19. They're a bit like Australia, locked down super quickly, got their numbers, flattened their curve and are doing going great guns. That said, I'm sure they have been through their own um, traumatic times. I'm sure um, that there are people that you know have suffered from their business just like I have or had some personal struggles um, with the illness and deaths of a loved one. So our love goes out to you. I know we're all looking optimistically about the future and, and post-COVID, but we do still need to think and remind ourselves that we've all been through quite a big journey recently in the last three months. That said, let's be optimistic and let's fill the world with love and support, which is what I'm here to do. So uh, today we, I should say, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but Kaya Ora, which is uh, Maori for hello, and hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a couple of whales today. Thank you for the um, suggestion. Uh, we've had a few suggestions, so I've got some paintings in mind going forward. Somebody wants to do a colourful giraffe. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, we've had Diana here wants to do a sunset, a local sunset, so we're going to do one uh, a sunset at some point um what was the other one i had oh a uh queenslander cottage so we're going to do that one so like i said to you last week um if you've got any ideas of paintings and kids this belongs to you too if you've got something you'd like to paint on a paint and picnic then please drop me a message down below um let me know where you're painting how old you are? I'd love to know how old my, my little artists are. Um, welcome if you're just joining me. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Hello, hello. You're not late. I'm on time. Um, today's painting of a whale tail is only going to take about an hour, if that. It's quite a simple painting and you can embellish it as much as you want. Tonight at seven o'clock, obviously, I'll be back with the adult painting which is a giant whale. And I have to say, a little bit more complicated, okay? That said, you can pick and choose how much detail you want to put in. If you don't want to do all the detail, you don't need to, okay? Now, if I'm just looking down, it's because I'm checking my messages, but also my um, images down here below me. All right, so who have we got? We've got Alison. Hello, Alison, welcome. And as more people rock on and start watching, then I will... Um, Keep checking to see if we've got any questions. As always, you can use whatever materials you've got at home. Felt tips, just a pencil, uh, crayons. You could go crazy and use collage if you wanted to. Um, I'm gonna be using acrylic today, but actually that's made me think that maybe next week we ought to do a picture that is collage. That would be quite fun for the kids, I think. Um, and I know some of you adults like to do both paintings, so you have, have this as a kind of warm-up exercise before you, before you do your evening one. So we might talk about that a bit later. So get your paints. You are going to need blues for the ocean. I'm going to use two blues for the landscape, and then we're doing a kind of sunset. So reds, oranges, pinks, um, and yellow. Uh, you don't have to follow my colours, as you know, absolutely to the letter. If you want to change it up and you want to match it to, um, you know, your bedroom, then you can, okay? Feel free to make those creative choices yourself. I'm literally here to guide you. Um, hopefully you can hear me really well. Let me know if you can't, uh, but I've got my gorgeous Leo Sayer mic a pin, um, a, attached to me here. And obviously two cameras, so you should be able to see me right in front of you as I chat. And then I've got a second camera here so you can watch my hands as we paint. It's getting all very fancy now, isn't it? So um, don't forget that all of these I save. I know I say it every week, but for all of our new viewers, of which I'm sure there are some, I save these videos as soon as we've done the Facebook Live. So if you go to at you create art at home, please feel free to join my community. Like the page, become a follower, enjoy yourself. And then you'll get all my notifications whenever I make a new, um, a new film, have a little teach, share some funny stories. Um, it is quite amusing. And we've got a lovely community that's been built up there. I'm so proud 
to be part of it. I'm so proud that you fill my bucket each week. But yeah, in, in that community, you just need to go to the videos tab and you will find, gosh, I think there's over 160 videos there now. So if you are new to this community, you have got so much you can be getting on with. I know there's still plenty of people, especially in America, that are in lockdown. So while you're struggling and you've been three months in this horrible place, um, you know, find your inner creative side, have a go. You'll be surprised. I've got so many ladies, kids and gentlemen that have joined me in the last, what, what is it now, 10 weeks, and some of them haven't painted since high school and they've loved it. So you're very welcome in videos. Leave me a message below if you get stuck or if you need help or if you just want some further guidance, all right? Okay, let me just see if I've got any more messages. Hello, Linda, welcome, welcome. And we're gonna st get start painted. Oh, blah, blah, I, I tripped over my tongue. We are going to get started and get painting. I should slow down. I know, I'm like a, a when I get in front of you guys, I get so excited that it's painting time um, that I just trip over what I'm gonna say. Okay, so children, and adults, if you are having a go as well, um, we are painting in landscape. Oh, sorry, duh, portrait. I'm doing this, saying the wrong thing. We're painting in portrait, which means you want the, pa the paper or your canvas in the long format, okay, up and down. The seven o'clock painting, landscape, the different, different shape, okay? So we're doing it long. So you can see I've got my painting in the long version. Now, when you've got a piece of paper like this, don't feel like you have to paint the whole thing if you don't want to. If you don't want to, you can always cut your paper in half, or you can just draw your own frame in the middle and just use the center of it, okay? Don't feel like you have to fill the painting. And if you've got a small canvas, fine. If you've got a large canvas, fine. There is no one size fits all. Art is very much personal and a personal choice. So whatever you've got, we're just gonna make it work and that's what's great, all right? Okay, so let's get started, kids. I'm dying to get into here. Let's try not to knock my my um, easel. Okay, so I'm going to start off with doing some base colours, all right? And we're going to start off with the sky, and we're going to layer that sunset. Then we're going to let that dry a little bit. We're going to go down and do the ocean. Then we're going to do the hills. Then we're going to go back and add some detail, and the final thing we'll be putting in our, wh our whale tail. Excuse me, I've just got a little... A bit, bit of a hiccup then. Okay, so my computer keeps shutting off, which is annoying. All right. Okay, so I want you to pick um, your, your, let's find a drawing, um, a, a pencil or a paintbrush that's got a pointy tip. So the pointy tip ones, if I show you on here, the pointy tip ones means that you could, they're, they're just better for drawing. You get a bit more of a sort of uh, fine line. Okay, I'm gonna dip my brush into some yellow, a tiniest amount, not lots, just a tiny bit of yellow. And we wanna come up here. So this is my center line where I've got my two um, clips. And I'm gonna come up here in this top corner, in this top quarter, and I'm gonna put a sun in. The sun is kind of setting, but it's not way down low. If you want to put it way down low, help yourself, okay? That's fine. All right, so spin your hand in a circle like this, and when you're ready, you're gonna put your sun down. Now mine has smudged just, so I'm gonna turn this light upwards, just off so that you can see the color a bit more. Once I've painted some stuff, I'll put that light back on, but just as we're going, the glare is making it a bit difficult for you to see. So there's my yellow sun nice yellow round sun who else we've got we've got morning from noah and naomi beautiful they're joining us from cornwall in the uk welcome <laughs> i'm coming to the end of the day and i am pretty tired because i have been on a virtual training course since 8 30 this morning um, and I am learning how to do all this stuff and hopefully bring my business online. So at the moment, I'm still gifting you all my love, but there is method in my madness. And obviously, as we move on, then Karen is going to start getting her business head back on and start making some money out of it because I've got to feed my family somehow. 
So I am retraining my brain and I have been on a conference with 800 people from around the world today learning how to put what I do in a digital format and be able to offer it online to everybody around the world. I'll still do free stuff, always going to be still doing free stuff, that's part of my gift, gift, gift. But um, yeah, we, I'm, uh, that's what I've been learning today. Okay, so let's colour in that one yellow. If you've only got texters, uh, texters, felt it pens, a texter is an Australian word for felt it pens, then um, when we do our sun, uh, when we do our sky, you're going to need to merge your colours. So colour in lines and leave some gap so that when you want to overlay to try and create a blend, then you put this is your yellow colour, this is your orange colour, and you sort of you sort of knit them together like that. That's the same with coloured pencils or anything. With crayons, you can blend over the top. Coloured pencils, you can blend over the top, but you do want to be do a bit of knitting together, okay? If you're doing watercolours, super easy. All right, now, wash that brush out. The reason why I need to wash it really well is because I want to dip it into blue, and obviously, if I dip it into blue after yellow, kids, what am I going to get? green so we want to get some blue on our brush and you can see where my um, clips are this is halfway across my bit of paper I want to do a line right across and that's going to be my horizon here we go right across one side to the other and that is my horizon line horizon is where the sky stops and the ground or the sea starts and that's your line okay so that is horizon, and they're always horizontal. You never have a horizon line like that. Usually means I've had too much wine and I'm on a boat somewhere. So yeah, it's definitely horizontal. Doesn't matter if you have a few bumps, it's water. So we can have a few bumps and a bit of movement, all right? Good job. Okay, putting down my little pen, pen or paintbrush, and I'm getting my fatter paintbrush. Now you might not have one that's square. You can see this is a square head chisel brush but you might have a round brush, and that's fine. The, the, um, the large brush head me means that we cover more of the paper quicker, all right? And we're gonna try and paint horizontally, and we want to create a beautiful sky sunset, okay? So I'm gonna start off, and I'm gonna dip it in some pink. If you're using chalks or something, this will work really well. And I'm just gonna streak my pink, across the paper. Now you can see that mine is quite watery. I haven't got really big, thick lumps of paint. Why? Well, because I can always add to it, but it's really difficult to take the paint away. So I don't want to make it too thick in the first instance. So this is just pink out of the tube, and I'm just brushing it side to side. And you can see I've just touched my sun, and that is fine, because in a minute we are going to put some yellow around the edge of our sun. So if you, if you end up touching your sun and some yellow comes out, don't worry about that at all. I'm going to keep up putting my brush in the water so that I can use the water to move the colour around. So this isn't watercolour, this is acrylic. But I'm just, the difference with... Um, a normal painting is I'm using not much acrylic, so I'm just using, I want layers of colour, and I don't want my sky to be super, super thick at this stage. So I'm just doing a lovely, soft coating of this pink, and where I've got patches that are darker or thicker, that's fine, because that just looks like cloud or the changing formation of the sky. So... I'm not going to worry about my clips. You might want to move yours around, but I'm not going to worry about it for this time. Time's money, as they say. All right, now I want to add a little bit of red. So I'm dipping it into my red, and I'm just going to go above my pink, and I'm going to start to put some red in there. This is like a beautiful sunset. Gosh, we have them all over the world. Naomi and Noah are from Cornwall which is where I was born and where I grew up. Gorgeous part of England. Um, it's the, for those of you in America, New Zealand or Australia, it's the funny boot shaped bit on the bottom of England. It's the tiny bit at the bottom. Um, and actually Cornwall is literally tiny at the bottom, but it's full of very special people. Okay, I'm now gonna dip it into some yellow 
and I'm going to do the yellow round my, su my, round my sun. Don't let your sun go. You don't want to lose your sun. So I've gone round my sun and now I use my brush to let that yellow merge in with the pink. And you want to keep on moving it until those colours just bleed and blend. And you can add more pink, more red, make your sunset exactly how you would like it, okay? Exactly how you'd like it. Some people like lots of yellow, they want more orangey colour. Some people like it very, very pink. You can have it however you like it. Look, I could add pink there and get a really strong colour there. You can really mix it up however you want it. Now, right next to that sun, I'm just going to go round the sun with white to create that kind of aura. Do you know what I mean by that? You know when you look... Well, Kids, don't look at the sun too much, eh? You don't want to burn your eyes out. But if you quickly glance up at the sun, or sometimes if you look at the moon, it has that hazy ring, doesn't it? That hazy ring of colour, which um, that's what we're trying to get here. So I'm just going to use my square brush and I'm going to spin around the outside. And because I've used white, it just breaks up that yellow and then I'm just going to blend in those last little bits. So you kind of get that ring around your around your sun, bit of yellow, bit of orange. I'm feeling like I wanna go a bit darker up here because this is the top of the sky. And I hadn't planned to, but this is what I love about art. When you start something, you go, mmm, ooh, I fancy a bit. Well, not necessary, that's quite weird, but I fancy a bit of purple in mine. So I'm just gonna dink it in a tiniest bit. Look how much I've dinked. Hardly anything at all, just a tiny dink. And I'm just going to put purple at the top of my sky, which is going to make it look like it's starting to go into nighttime. Just a tiny bit. Again, brushing my brush like this, sideways. If you've got watercolour and it's making this beautiful, you know, um, run of colours, I mean, I'm sure it looks sensational. That's what I... When you're using watercolours, doing sunsets, oh, fa fabulous, fabulous. Okay, I don't want too much purple, so I'm just going to blend that in, and then I think my sky is done for the minute. If you've got some running bits, some drips, don't worry about that. I absolutely love drips. I think they look, spe they give kind of a painting energy sometimes, so I never kind of worry if I have drips on my painting. So let's just see if we've got any messages. Hello, Kath. Welcome, welcome. Kath is my beautiful friend in the gap, and I understand, Kath, that you've got my son again tonight. He spends as much time at your house, and he doesn't mind. I'm going to have to start giving you some money for board and lodge, I think. You know your son is always welcome to have a sleepover at mine. And, you know, I know we can only have one or two friends, um, and it's all very new post-COVID, but Ryan is welcome at any time, okay? But thank you for having Thomas, and I hope, he has a, hope he's a good boy and he has a good time. Okay, can you see from my horizon line, I've left how much? I've left that much. <laughs> well, in terms, so if I put my hand there, it's about as long as my thumb. Can you see that? And I've left that quite intentionally because we're going to put in the hills. Now, in order to make the hills have dimension, and dimension, children, means you want to make it look like it goes backwards. So you've got some sort of... Um, the scenery goes deeper and deeper. If you can think of, where could we think of? Well, if I was thinking of England, I would think of, or the United Kingdom, I would think of the Scottish Highlands or the Lake District or somewhere like that, where you've got those hills that undulate and then you can see them in the distance. Exactly the same in Australia, down um, in Costco National Park, where you've got really dramatic scenery. And obviously there's millions of those sort of hills down in South New Zealand in the, in the um, Southern Ireland. Uh, gosh, I can't wait to go back there and take the kids. One of the best holidays in my life, well, part of my backpacking trip was um, doing all those amazing tramps around New Zealand. A tramp, for those who don't know it, is basically a walk, but you they've got these amazing purpose-built wooden cabins. So you, all you need is your backpack of stuff, and you go for a walk for three, four days. Some of them are 10 days. I, we did the Abel Tasman. We did one down in... Um, 
uh, what's that little island at the very end? Stewart Island, we did one there, and we did the Milford Sound. And you basically just sleep in these little huts. So you rock up, there's a whole bunch of people going for a walk, you chill out, you've got views like we're gonna paint now. You have your muesli bar and hot beans that you make up. It's just fabulous. Yeah, really, really fabulous. Okie dokie, I want you to mix up a pale blue. A pale blue. So, what sort of colour? I don't want it to be baby blue. So look, if I show you my brush now, if you can see that, I've mixed up there, it's kind of baby blue, isn't it? So how do you stop it from being baby blue? Add a tiny touch of purple to it. Just going to see if I can show you that. And you get more of a purpley blue. Can you see that? All right. So you can make your hills however you want. If you want pointy volcanoes, kids, you can. I want you to create an undulating um, mountain line, okay? We're going to do two layers. So this is our back layer. When you look at um, landscapes, the hills in the distance are always more faded. It's, everything becomes brighter and more crisp the closer it comes to you. Just like when you're in, you know, you're um, looking across a fields, the grass in front of you is really, really bright green and the grass in the distance is obviously just soft and pale green. And it's the same with hills, okay? So I'm just gonna have a quick look. I'm gonna start here. Uh, I, this side I'm gonna have quite high and I'm gonna make it go and I want it to finish here. So I'm gonna go up over the pink here, then I'm gonna come down, but I'm gonna finish it where my pink and my white join. So I'm just gonna draw it in first. And I'm literally just making a wobbly line, yeah? Not really, if you need to draw it, you can first, if you, you know, don't worry about it too much. You don't need to worry, okay? And I'm just gonna paint it in. And you might see a little bit of that pink showing through and that's okay. Just stop it banks in there for a minute. So I'm just painting mine downwards. Can you see that? I'm nothing very technical, kids. I'm just painting it downwards like this to fill in that gap. I might make it go up a little bit there, I think. And just there, just check. I just don't want it so flat. That's a bit better. Beautiful. Now I can see, and if I look in um, what the, the view that you're looking at in my computer, I can see my pink coming through. And that's fine, it just gives a bit of texture, a bit of depth, a bit of warmth, and it will dry with a tone behind it. So don't worry about that at all. Okie dokie. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, um, add a tiny bit more dark blue, and using a round brush, and this is a bigger round brush than I had before, you can just create some little trees or something in the background if you want to. This is not compulsory, this is entirely up to you. If you want to add, make it look like there's some trees in the background, can you see how I'm painting them? I'm just holding my brush and I'm almost stamping them. Now, sometimes this is nice because it just breaks up that line, but if you like that line and you want it nice and crisp, then you don't need to do this at all. This is optional, all right? That's an optional. Okay, now I want you to mix. So using the same color that you mixed, add a bit more blue, and we're going to get a darker tone. And we are going to do the second layer. So this is, again, whichever shape you want. If you don't like it, just rework your... I'm just going to move that clip further down because it's right in the way. Just work the line to however you want and pull that colour down. Don't try and blend all your colours into one colour. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, can you see how I've got a tiny run of dark there? Just leave that bit, yeah, because that gives you the, the changing contrasting colour that you're looking for without having to do anything. It just happened. Fabulous. Love it when that happens. Um, so I'm just going to pull the colour down again. Need a bit more on my brush. So you can see there when I picked it up, I've got a bit of pale blue. That's okay. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Those changing tones are what we're looking for. All I need particularly is the difference between the light mountain and then the next darker down mountain or hill range. 
Okay, now I haven't painted to the bottom because we're going to put in one final hill. So you can go, you can add a bit of purple to your blue and a bit of blue. This is much more in the foreground and you're just going to add in that last hill range and it might be something that is much um, lower so it doesn't have so many bumps and curves. And definitely with mine, I am going to put in a couple of trees. So I'm going to get that purpley blue in first, which I've just done. Might just put a change there. Not got enough paint on my brush, hang on. Just going to lift up that corner there. Don't want it totally flat. Okay, then I'm going to get that brush again. Make sure it's got some dark blue and purple. And I am just, because this is in the foreground, I do want it to have... You know, maybe it's bushes, um, little trees and bushes on the shoreline. So I'm just blobbing it along, not being too exact. Like this. There we go. You can just blob it along. And we're just creating a little bit of a landscape in that back area. Okay? So that's my landscape done. Woohoo! Let's see if I've got any questions or any queries. The sunset is looks beautiful. Thank you, Kamal. That's so kind. And thank you for joining. Anybody else, where are you joining from? Give me a shout out. Let me know where you're coming from. And um, how are your paintings going? Um, I tell you what, let's, let's do a quick spot question. If you are happy with your painting, write a one. If you are about your painting or your drawing, put a two. If you are going, oh no, put a three. And then let me know why you're going, oh no, and I'll be able to help you. Okay? One, two, or three. I'm going to put a one for mine. I'm pretty happy with mine. I'm pretty loving it. Um, but, you know, maybe you just haven't got it quite right yet. And But that's okay. We've got time. We've got time. We've got time. Okay, we are going to move down below. So I'm going to move my clip up here. I'm, I'm painting on paper and we're going to paint the ocean. Now, I am going to, I want to just paint really loosely a whole load of blue, okay? But you see where this sun is? I am going to leave a channel. So I'm going to draw a line there. And there. So I want you to do that first. We are going to paint through it, but I just want you to see where that channel, because that is where the colour will reflect on our ocean. So if you have that kind of guide mark, you kind of know where to go. Oh, we've got a one. Good job, Alison. That's what I like. Confidence. I'm happy with my painting. Yay. Uh, all right, guys. So I'm just literally, it's quite a bright blue. This is the ocean in the front. And I'm literally going to paint it horizontally. So you blob the paint on and then, so look, watch, slowly. Everybody stop what they're doing. Eyes up. Look at teacher. <laughs> okay, put your paint on, squish it across your, across your paper, just blob it on, then put your brush in the water and let the water do the work. Okay? So you don't have to keep on going back for lots and lots of paint. At the moment, I'm just putting my brush in the water and I'm just letting the water go across. See these blobs? These are the blobs of paint. But with the water, the water will just push them around. And like I say, if you get these drippy, if you get these bits that drip, that's lovely. That To me, that just adds a bit of texture. And actually, at the end of the day, it is water. So having these sort of drip lines is nice. Okay, I'm just going to do the other side now. So I'm just putting on some paint on this side. And then use my brush and just... And once I've done the main blue like I have now, so if you are painting, just raise your eyes again. <laughs> right, once I've done all my blue on both sides, now with a wet brush, watch what I do. I'm not going to tell you, which means you'll have to watch. Ready? Are you ready? You have to watch. I'm not going to tell you. Are you watching? 
Okay, I'm gonna tell you now. <laughs> so all I'm using is a wet brush and I'm using the paint either side to go to cut through. And you can see that what it does is it leaves my channel of paint just that little bit lighter, little bit, it's not as dense because I haven't put any paint on. All I've done is swoosh the paint across. Um, and it doesn't matter if the lines show a little bit, I'm not bothered about that. We're gonna add extra color later. But what it does do is gives us that bright area, that pale area. If you're using pencils, colored pencils or textures, I wouldn't paint, I wouldn't draw in the whole thing in one color. Leave some white space. This is where you're gonna knit your colors together, like this, okay? You're gonna knit your colors together. Okay, so we are really looking smashing there. This is gonna dry off, um, and before we do our finishing touches, on the ocean, we're gonna just let it breathe and let it dry. I'm just gonna see if I've got any questions. Hello, Auntie Catherine. Ah, oh, beautiful. I haven't forgot I need to do your drawing. In fact, while everybody's hooked on, I started this thing called Faces of the Front Line where I've been drawing um, amazing people like my Auntie Kath who are at the front line of the healthcare industry. Whether they work in admin, or cleaning, or um, an ambulance driver, or um, a doctor. It, to, to be honest, all of that's irrelevant. They're all right in the forefront of making our place and our world a safe place, um, or a, you know, as safe as it can be, let's put it that way. And dealing with trauma in its, I don't even, I can't even think how hard it must be in there, actually. I've watched some programs about the NHS. Um, it's overwhelming to watch what some of those uh, workers are going through every day with, you know, people who are passing away six overnight and, you know, just the whole thing, overwhelming. Must be taking it home every day, overwhelmed. And my heart goes out to you because actually in Australia, or certainly in Queensland, we haven't been anywhere near as bad as any of that. However, roll back seven, eight weeks ago, I can tell you that I was in a place of complete uh, scared. I, I was scared. I was scared of the unknown and scared about what, you know, when the, your government tells you, you're not going to school, you're not going to work, close everything down, don't get on a bus, don't touch anything, all the parks are closed down, you walk around anywhere and there's hazard tape everywhere. When that happens, and that's the, the most significant thing that's happened in my lifetime, you suddenly realize, yeah, this isn't a joke actually, this is, this is serious. Um, and you've got these people that are battling every day in the front line and it's not just healthcare workers, there's, you know, politicians that are, are working incredible hours to try and save our economy and save uh, what we know as our life or make it better. And so I started these drawings and I did about 10 and I was overwhelmed in my inbox with the amount of people that wanted drawings and I am going to do them, I promise. But, um, and I promise, I promise Andy Kath, I am gonna do it and you're top of the list. But 10 days ago, about 10 days ago, I got the opportunity to do some online learning and help to re-educate myself so that I could, while I'm in this lockdown situation, while my business is in transition, I can better myself to essentially provide a better service to you guys um, after this all changes. So that all this wonderful stuff that I've done just doesn't dissolve. What's the point in that? You know, I've created something which I never knew I could and I'm not about to stop. So I've been re-educating myself. So I had to, while these courses were there, and of course, because I'm giving my time for free, other people are doing um, business education for free, and I had to jump on with both hands, pull up my big curl pants, and start to re-educate myself. So that said, I will be doing my faces at the front line. I've got about eight still to do, so I will be doing them, and Auntie Kathy will be one of them. All right, that was a good little natter because it now means that my paper's dry. You see, uh, up here, very switched on. Okie dokie. Now, I want you to have a look at your sky. I want you to have a look at your background. What other tweaky bits do you want to have, okay? Do you want to put a cloud in? Do you want some stars? Let's have a little play with that. So, if you want some stars, now the stars would only be shining in the very top. 
where it started to go dark. You know that beautiful moment at night when you just see stars arrive and they're just like, bing, 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 bing. That's this, this is that moment. So it's not day and it's not night, but there's just a couple of little things happening. You know, the brightest stars in the sky are just starting to pop through and it's that gorgeous transition. You might wanna put a cloud in. So look, watch what I'm doing. I'm just putting my brush, dipping a bit of white down, kids. Now I'm gonna use my best friend, Percy Pinky, and I'm just gonna rub my finger like this. If you are using um, textures, uh, felt tip pens, or you're using crayons, well, usually you do have in a crayon set and a, and a chalk pastel set or oil pastel, you do have a white. So you should be able to do this. If you haven't got um, a white in your felt tip pens, then maybe you could just do it with a bit of yellow. You know, just add in a tiny edge of cloud if you want to. Now, I, I always love this, and I know it's a little bit twee, but I do love a cloud that goes across either the moon or the sun. So I like to just break it up there. I don't know, it adds a bit of atmosphere, doesn't it? So that's it. I just added a few little stars at the top, a little bit of a cloud blowing over. It gives a bit of energy and a bit of movement in the stillness. Okay, now if you want to, you can add some tiny highlights in the, in the back here, like maybe you've got little houses. I'm not going to, but if you want to and you've got time to play with it, help yourself. I want you to really enjoy it, you know, um, make those decisions yourself. Okay, let's get on to putting in our tail. Oh, I know. Now I'm gonna draw with purple. If if it was my picture and you were doing this with felt tip pens, I would get a pencil to draw the tail and then text over the top. If you are doing watercolor, I would not put very much paint on the end of your paintbrush while you draw, just in case you wanna move it and you're not happy with it. If you're using acrylic, then do what I'm doing, which is use purple. If you haven't got purple, dark blue, all right? And then we're gonna add black afterwards. But if you put black on now when you make a mistake, it's like that. <laughs> uh, no problem, Anticaf. You're welcome. Everybody else is okay. All right. So my tail is going to go here. And I want my tail splashing out here. So uh, you wouldn't call it the trunk of the tail, but the bit of the body. So the tail of a whale is up here. And then it sort of joins. So we're going to put in the bit of the body first. So here I am. And I'm going to go in in it's a bit like um the neck of a bottle in one side and then around on the other side the neck of a bottle now how big's that well that's probably about the length of my thumb so i've curved it slightly on that side and i haven't curved it as much but I've got more of a curve going. So this way is concave, which means curving in, and this is curving out. If I color all that in, you'll get a better shape. I'm gonna color it black at the end, but I'll just color it purple for now. So can you see that? Hopefully you can see that as a shape. It's a bit like a, um, a fin of a shark without the top of it, if that makes sense. Okay, now we're gonna do a huge, great big boat shape, okay? So wherever you start and wherever you finish, that's the, the span of your tail. So I'm gonna go right across. That's the span of my tail. And the easiest way when you're painting tails uh, of whale, tail, whale tails, is to think of a moustache. You know, like that curvy wide M. So go right up the middle of your tail, put yourself a dot, and then you're gonna create a moustache, okay? So watch me, curve and to the end, curve and to the end. And actually that looks like a giant pair of lips now, doesn't it? That's a, I've never taught it that way, but now I've looked at it, I'm gonna teach it that way every time. Put a great big pair of smackers on your tail. There's a great big pair of lips there. And then I'm just gonna paint that in. 
And then what you have to do is just kind of make sure the tail and the body are connected. So I'm just going to create the curve and make sure they're connected. So it's not kind of just stuck on, yeah? So it's not kind of stuck on. Now, once you've done it in purple, then you can decide how much black you want to add. So I am going to, if this is the sun, then the darkest area is going to be on the opposite side to where you painted your sun. So I'm going to make sure that side is really black. And I'm actually going to keep some of it, some of the purple showing. I'm just going to keep some of the purple showing because actually whales are kind of a bluey purple, aren't they? So I'm happy to have some of that little bit of purple showing through. And it makes it not so flat as well. Awesome. Okie dokie. How are we doing? Anybody stuck? No, everybody's looking great. Well done, guys. So where my um, tail hits the water, we just want to add some of those rings. You know, the rings where the ever decreasing rings of water. So you want to have some kind of movement. Like that. So I'm just using the darker blue. And now I'm going to use the darker blue to, to streak across the water to add some sort of surface waves and surface tension. If it doesn't wobble across enough, just dip it back in, the, in your water pot to make your brush wet. And then it should just glide across the surface. And you want to go right across. You want to take it over your your area that you left pale as well. You want to make sure that the water, the lines are right across. And you don't want it to be big, lumpy, blobby bits of paint. So just make sure that your brush is nice and wet and then it should just streak across the paper like that. Now when you're painting, bearing in mind that this is the lightest area. So if you're going to put dark lines, heavy dark lines, you want to put it on this area of your canvas in the darker area. Okay. So I've done my blue and now we get to have a bit of fun. Make sure your brush is clean and we're just going to add a tiny bit of color. So I'm going to add some yellow here, which is just highlighted where the sun and I'm just flicking my wrist one way or another, just to get that lovely colour. There's something really um, majestic and elegant about a whale, isn't there? When last year I was so lucky to go to Canada, um, I actually took a cruise with my sister. She um, invited me to go on holiday with her and it was amazing. Um, and we went and saw the whales up in Alaska. Holy dooly. Honestly, it was like one of the best things I have ever done in my life. It was incredible. Just the way they kind of, I don't know, break through the surface and, you know, that the big fountain. Oh, it's just, oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. So you can see I'm just adding tiny streaks of red. You can add pink. Just create some color from the sky above. As we all know, water is actually transparent and the color of the water is purely from the sky, the reflection of what it is above. So you definitely want to add some streaks of orange and yellow and pink. And it can be as loose or as streaky as you want it to be. I'm just kind of streaking my brush across. And finally, after we've done this, we're going to add a little bit of white. And that's our painting done. You've done brilliantly. So I'll take a picture of this and obviously pop it online. As always, I would love it if you would share with me your beautiful artwork. I love seeing it. It gives me the warm fuzzies. 
makes me feel like I'm not completely balmy, stood in a room in the middle of Brisbane when everyone else is having a drink and eating their tea with their family and I'm stood here talking to myself, which obviously I am. Um, but it does make me feel like, you know, it's worth it and people are enjoying it. If you don't want to share, that's obviously fine as well. But I would love to see your artwork. I love creating those um, little galleries for us all to enjoy. I think everybody's enjoying seeing them. I'll put this, uh, if you, if you um, don't get time to finish, as you know, I'll save it. If you have to rush off, I'll save it. And you'll be able to come back. You create art at home. You'll be able to watch it on the replay. And if you're watching this on the replay, as in this has already happened and you've popped in, then put a hashtag replay, say, yo, Bess, I'm back. Um, because, you know, live events don't always suit everyone, do they? We're all working or, I don't know, maybe the kids just had a tantrum. Okay, so I'm now going to do my final little highlights. So I'm going to add some highlights to the tail this side. And this just really, like, pumps it up. Going to add a little bit of shaping and then some to my, um, my what do you call them, ripples. Sometimes, I know I talk a lot, and I know I do. I know I do. I have all my life. Being a, being a chatter. I was a chatterbox as a child. Chatterbox and a wriggle. My nanny, my nanny Sally, which is Auntie Kat's mum, my nanny Sally used to say, Dear, you've got to marble up your bum. Because I never sat still. Like she used to say that to me. She did honest. And I probably did. I was a right wriggle pants. Okay, just adding a bit of white through that middle bit. Actually, Nanny Sally would have been amazing in COVID. Do you know why? She was fantastic at cooking, so there was always something yummy to eat. But she always had a jigsaw on the go. So you could go down to Nanny's, and she always had a jigsaw on the table. And one of those ones, and I know my Auntie Kath does them as well, like 2,000-piece jigsaw which was like, I don't know, a couple of thatch cottages. I could never see, excuse the phrase, the wood from the trees. It all looked the same to me. And as you can imagine, probably now I'd have been diagnosed with ADHD anyway, because I was kind of one of those kids. Jigsaws and me, oh my goodness, it's just too frustrating. I need something more energizing. Anyway, that is my painting, we finished. Let's do a time check. <laughs> Boom, less than an hour, people. I'm rocking on gas. Yeah. Well, I hope you've had a lovely time. As always, I've loved sharing my Saturday afternoons with you. I'm going to go home and have a bit to eat. And then I will be back at 7 o'clock for the whale. Uh, it is a little bit more tricky. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the pigeons tr tricky, as tricky as the pigeons. There is a fair few lines, but you don't have to do all the lines. But it looks beautiful. And when... Um, when, I can't remember if it was Jackie or who sent me those paintings, uh, sorry, the details. Oh, it might have been. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Christine. Um, I can't remember who it was that sent, off the top of my head, I'd have to look at my messages, who said, can we do New Zealand? But she sent me the pictures of this um, artist, Rosa, and I looked at it and immediately I just went, that's the sort of thing I love to paint, like for me. Now, it's going to be different because obviously I'm painting to a time we're trying to get these done in an hour and a half, two hours. Um, two hours tops, by the way. Um, and on obviously, this is the sort of painting that I could see investing time in to painting like boohoo, like a big one. Uh, and maybe if it floats my boat, I might give it a go. But um, as it is, that's it for today. So listen, thanks for joining me. I will see you next time, next week, 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. I think that's what it's pronounced as. Essentially, five o'clock our time, which is about 8 a.m., is it, Naomi, I think, in the UK? Thank you so much for joining me. Loving you. Having a great time. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. For those of you coming back at 7, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>